Hey there, welcome back to middle school shop class. Today we're going to do a cool little puzzle box project. This is a project that I've done with grade sevens and grade eights uh, with some very good results. Let's see how it works. So the first time I saw this design was I think in Make Magazine and I've modified it a little bit so that uh, my 12 and 13 year olds can manage it. Here's how it works. It's got some pegs here some of them are real, some of them are not. And these are the locking pegs. You just have to figure out which ones to take out. You swivel the top, pull, and then open like that. It's a pretty simple but clever little design. The first thing I do is cut some pieces for the students. Uh, pieces I've chosen are 80 centimeters long by six and three quarters centimeters wide. The reason I've chosen this size is because then I can get six pieces out of a eight foot one by six. And we're going to cut this piece down to two pieces at 30 centimeters and two pieces at 10 centimeters. So these are the two sides and the two ends of our box. Lay the box together like this. We're just going to glue it up and clamp it. I always get them to put some paper towel down so that we don't get glue on the table. Just take these ones, glue the ends. I have also had some kids try some fancier corner joinery instead of just a standard butt joint. So if you think that your students are up for that, sometimes ends up with a little bit of wood filler though. Now that our frame's glued up, it's time to put the bottom on. The other reason I give the students this standard size piece of wood to make their frame out of is so that I can cut a bunch of plywood bottoms that are all the same size. But obviously you can scale this project up or down as you like. To put the bottom on, we're just gonna put some glue around the frame and then we're gonna drop the bottom on like that and we're gonna nail it down with some finishing nails. Once you're done nailing the bottom on, it's time to move on to the next step. The next step is to make this little locking notch piece right here. So I cut a bunch of one by material for the students. It's 14 centimeters long by four centimeters wide. To measure out the locking notch, I'll have students take another piece of one by material and just line it up along the top of the block and hold it and trace a line like that. And then measure in three and a half centimeters along that center line on each side. Put a little mark, put a little mark, and then two centimeters along the top. Put a little mark, put a little mark. If you're off by a little bit here, it's not a super big deal. All we need to do is have an angle so that it holds our lid in place. And it's kind of nice if it looks fairly even. Got, and then we're gonna go cut it up. And we're done. The next step is to glue that piece on to one end of the box. It doesn't really matter which end at this point, and then clamp it. Make sure that it lines up nice and flush with that edge and you don't put it on like that. And just leave it like that to dry. Next we need to glue a block uh, in one of the corners right here. Usually I give kids, uh, a pair of kids, a bigger block like this. This is just cut uh, 
uh, one and a half by one and a half out of a two by four. And I get them to cut it in half and then that's good for two people and they can sand the cut end. So we just take this, we're just gonna glue two sides and the bottom and put it in place. And just hold it in with a couple clamps. And then we're gonna let all that dry. While our box is drying, I get the kids to move on and start making this nice laminated top piece here. I have a big table full of uh, wood strips and they can just pick a whole bunch of pieces and they're cutting them all and we cut them at 35 centimeters. The box is only 30 centimeters in length, but by cutting them at 35, it gives them the ability to make an error two times when they're trying to cut this angled notch piece here, which is tricky. If they make an error, I can just cut it off and they can try it again. And they have the ability to mess that up twice and still have enough length left over. And if they get it right the first time, then we just cut off the extra. And we're just going to glue those all together. The method I use for gluing that has resulted in the least amount of mess when we're dealing with 12 and 13 year olds is to instruct them to do it like this. Take the first piece, place it on the paper towel. Put paper towel on the table to not get glue on the table. Take the second piece, put it face up on the paper towel, and coat with a generous amount of glue, and fold that onto the first piece. Keep repeating this process ensuring that they get enough glue each time. If they don't get enough glue, it will tend to crack when we put it through the planer later on. Flip, glue, and flip, just like that. And last one. And we're done. And then we're gonna clamp it up nice and tight. Now you can just use F clamps for this too, but I have some nice big uh, Jorgensen block clamps here. And if you wanna have some fun with some 12 and 13 year olds, try to get them to figure out how to use these clamps. Clamp it up nice and tight and wait for it to dry. Next, we're gonna make the corner block. This is the swivel block that the whole lid pivots on. So once we take out our locking pegs, we can open and swivel. I make this out of just a block of wood that the kids drill and shape up. And then we cut a piece of 7 16 doweling, 10 centimeters long. I have one of my drill presses set up with a cross slide vise and a 7 16 inch bit. And I have the depth set so that it will just not go through the piece of wood. So if the students just come and place their block there, tighten up the vise, Drill a hole. They'll get a hole the correct depth, and I instruct them to drill the hole first, and then draw and design their peg around the hole, and then cut it out after. As it's much more difficult to come over here with their tiny little peg piece and try to drill a hole through it. And back over to the scroll saw to cut out the peg. All done, now we're gonna sand it up. Usually, usually I'll have students uh, hand sand the pegs. It'll give them an appreciation for sanding. And it's also a little small to do on any of the power sanders. So I'll just give them some loose sandpaper and they can sand that all up. And once it's nice and pretty, they take their 10 centimeter long peg, put some glue on it. Ensure that they put glue around the outside. A lot of kids just put glue on the end and then it doesn't stick properly. And twist it into the hole, like that. Wipe off any extra glue that has squirted out. And then you're gonna leave that to dry too. The kids also need to make some locking pegs in a very similar manner. Uh, we're using 5 16 doweling here, and then whatever sort of pieces of scrap were lying around. And we can do a single peg or a double peg. We drill them on the drill press, Cut these, these are only five centimeters long because they only need to go through the top two pieces instead of all the way into the box at this point. And you can decorate them however you like.
Once the laminated piece is all done, we're going to run it through the thickness planer. Alternatively, you could just plane it by hand and then sand it as well. Now that we've got our piece all planed up and the end square, we're going to get down to one of the trickier parts. You're going to need another piece of 1x6, this one 28 centimeters long, which is going to fit right here in the box. This is our spacer, the lower part of the top. And then this piece, we're going to line up on top there so that everything's nice and straight. You're going to line it up as straight as possible. And you're going to come down to the front edge of the box, make sure that that is centered. And take a pencil and trace the angle that you've got here and here onto that laminated piece. What you're going to end up with is two diagonal lines that look just like this. Once we've drawn our two diagonal lines, we're going to transfer those lines onto the top and the bottom of the board. And we're going to draw them back two centimeters from the edge of the board. So, and all these instructions that I'm giving, you may find a different way that you like to do this, but these are instructions that grade seven and grade eight students I've found are able to follow. So I've done my little marks there, and then you just take a ruler, measure back two centimeters, make a little mark, measure back two centimeters, make a little mark, use a square, come all the way across the board, like that, down, And like that. And then we're going to do the other side as well. And back over to the scroll saw to cut this out. Now this is important. We're only cutting out the small rectangle. If students make an error and they cut out the big rectangle, then they have to we have to cut this off and start this process again. Because we need to keep the little triangles there. So if they cut out the big rectangle, we will have lost these triangles in here. So make sure that they're only cutting the small rectangle. This is also a good time to remind them how to cut an inside notch like this. So we're going to go in and out, and then we're going to come in at a diagonal. I've already done the two verticals, then we come across like this. Now to cut out these little triangles right here, we're just going to use a coping saw. We're going to cut across there like this, and then down like that. At this point you're going to test it to see if you've measured and cut it correctly. So you put on the spacer plate, the bottom part of the lid, and then we put on our nicely cut notch piece and we slide it into place. If they've done it correctly, you should have a nice tight fit along here. If it doesn't fit right away, if it's a little snug, you can just sand these parts down a little bit. Um, if it's really, really loose, like if you're moving more than two or three millimeters back and forth, then I usually cut this part off and we start the whole process again. That's why we have that little bit of extra that we accounted for. Next we need to cut a diagonal across our board like this. Now depending on what corner you put your corner block in, we put it in this corner here, I would call this the upper right hand corner, uh, if the box is sitting like that. If the lid's going on like this, then this is going to be the short side and this is going to be the long side. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to measure down seven centimeters from the end here and 14 centimeters from the end over here. This is going to give me an approximate, uh, approximately a 30 degree line across the board. Now you can put this line somewhere else. It, I just put it here just because you could move it up or down however you like. But because the block is in this corner, we need to have 
um, it sloping in this direction. If you sloped it in the other direction, uh, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't pivot properly. And then we're going to go cut that. For my grade 7 and grade 8 students, I actually make this cut on the miter saw for them. They do all the measurements and they bring it over to me because it's really important that you do a nice precise cut so that the two pieces um, mesh together nicely when you're done. And I don't have my grade 7s and 8s using the miter saw. Okay, so now that we have that cut, we're going to start assembling this. And this is another part that's really important that they, they get right. There's a um, possibility here of making an error and having it drastically affect the way your box works. So take that spacer piece, put it down there, that's the bottom half of your lid. Take this piece, slide it in so that it fits perfectly. Take this piece and line it up so that all your lines, so that it looks really good. Good, so that all the lines are straight across here and so that it's, it's uh, flush up both sides. And once you have that perfectly in place, hold it, remove this, take a pencil, trace a line here, remove this piece, then we're going to get some glue, glue here. Don't go too close to the line because we don't want glue to come out over the line. It will stop this piece from fitting properly. So glue on there, then put it back together. Put that piece in, roots right on the line, right so that you had it just how you had it perfect. Put this piece back on just to double check that everything is straight. Okay, once you're happy with it, and I usually get them to remove that. And then we're going to take a couple of clamps and clamp the whole thing together. We'll just do it off the edge of the table here, like this. And as you're doing it, just make sure that nothing's moving. And then you're going to let that dry. And now that it's all glued, we just test it and make sure that it slides on nicely like that. And it does. If it's a little tight here, you can just sand these edges down and uh, that should help it to slide on. And once you like the way that everything lines up, you can go ahead and cut off the excess down here so that everything is the same length as the box frame. So at this point, I've got the main box frame done. Uh, here's a part of the piece that we cut off. We're going to keep that and we're going to glue it on the end here uh, later on in order to cover this part. And we've got that uh, corner peg that we made earlier. The next step is to open it up and find the center of this square block here using the diagonal corner to corner method. And what we want to do is measure in from the end and in from the edge and transfer those measurements onto this piece so that we can drill a hole down through here that will end up directly in the center of this block. So by taking my ruler and measuring from that center to the end and to the edge and then taking this piece and measuring in and over I've ended up with a little cross and I made a little circle that's where we're going to drill down. Now we have to drill all of these pieces together to make sure that everything's lined up. So we're going to put the whole box together, we're going to line everything up the way we like it, we're going to clamp it down, and we're going to drill it all the way through. Because as soon as we drill this, all these pieces are going to stay in the position that they're drilled in. Now you can clamp this to a table and just drill it as straight as you can with a hand drill that's the same size as our block here uh, with this one 7 16 but whatever size doweling you used here just get the same size drill bit uh, I'm gonna go and drill mine in with the drill press now for my students I have a little corner jig set up here at my drill press which makes it almost impossible for students to mess this part up all they have to do is line their box up in the corner like that and clamp it down and then drill it we have it clamped, and here we go. I also have the depth set so that they can't go too far. 
So we've now drilled the corner hole and it's gone through that piece and that piece and straight into our block. The reason we put such a big block here is if you're off by a couple of millimeters, it's not a huge deal. Next, we're going to drill a second hole in this piece and create a slot between them, which allows this to slide back and forth so that it can open. Let's do that. Using a ruler, we're going to measure three centimeters away from this hole, center to center, and uh, put a little line. Because this is a relatively short hole, I do have students just drill it with a hand drill. I have them clamp it to a table with a piece of scrap underneath, overhanging the edge of the table so that we're not drilling in, and then they're just going to put it straight and drill it. Okay. We've got our two holes, now we just need to cut out the piece in between them. Now you can easily do this with a jigsaw, but all my students know how to string the blade through a hole uh, on the scroll saw, so I usually get them to do it over here since I only have one jigsaw and a whole bunch of scroll saws. So we just draw two lines between the two holes, string the blade through, and we're just going to cut it. The idea is that that corner peg will slide nicely along there. If they haven't cut it properly or if you haven't cut it properly, you can just take a file and just file it a little bit. Just so it's nice and open so that that slides back and forth there. Now we can actually do a little test run of our box. We're going to put this piece on and this piece put our corner peg through the hole, have it go all the way down, and we'll see if it works by going swivel, push, swivel. So good. If you're happy with that mechanism, then it's time to move on. Next, as a decorative feature, we usually like to cover this piece up so that we don't see this when the box is finished. But we need the top of our little locking notch here to be down lower than the top of this piece right here. So if we take a ruler and we put it across there just a little bit below that edge and then we trace a line. We're going to go and sand this piece down until it's at that line. Here we go. And now we're down just a hair above that top edge so that when we put our cap piece on, uh, it'll fit nicely. At this time, it's time to glue the corner peg in place. Now here's another place where students can make an error. We need to glue the corner peg into the block, but not to either of these pieces. So in order to do that, we have to start with the peg through both of those pieces, then glue it, and then put it in. If students go and they put, put it together like this and they put glue on the peg and then push it down like that, they're going to glue all those pieces together. So the peg needs to be through these two pieces first and then glued. Swivel this into whatever shape, um, way you want it to point because as soon as you leave it there, this is no longer going to move. It's going to stay in that position. And then let it dry. Next you get to make the locking pegs. Now this is a place where you can really have a little bit of fun. So you can just do a standard single peg like that. That's the bare minimum is one peg in order to stop this piece from swiveling. But here we have a peg that looks like a puzzle piece where two of the pieces come out and two of them are glued down. Uh, here's a double that goes across the join there. 
or you can do some fake pegs. There's a fake peg and a fake peg that don't do anything. Here's one where we've used some uh, pencil crayons as pegs and some of them are glued in and some of them come out. Some of them are locking pegs and some of them are fake pegs. Uh, you can put stuff on the side that you have to pull out or swivel or slot. said this one you could do I've seen people do like 20 that all look the same where there's only two or three that you have to take out be creative and have fun with it the locking pegs are made in just the same way as we made the corner peg uh, we take any kind of piece of wood drill a hole not all the way through I have some thinner doweling I think this is some 5 16 and uh, you just cut a piece five centimeters long because it only needs to go through these two pieces this time and a little bit of glue on it and put it in. And you can make, like I said, as many as you want in whatever shapes you want and orient them however you like. In order to drill the hole for the locking peg, get a drill bit that's the same size as the doweling that you used for the peg. And then you're going to drill it anywhere in this area. You can't drill it here. This won't do anything. We need to stop this piece from swiveling. Ensure that you or your students clamp this down. I've seen students try to do it without clamping it and this piece starts to vibrate and they drill through and they don't have a straight hole all the way through and there ends up being a big gap along here. So make sure that it's nice and secure. Pick your spot and drill it all the way through. Test it out. It should be snug, but not too tight. That's great, perfect. Undo that, and now the whole box top is locked on. Almost done. So the box is essentially complete at this point, but uh, one little add-on that I like to do is I have the kids make a little cap for the end here so that we don't see this part. You can either just use a piece of any kind of material but uh, if you have a little piece of the extra left over, you cut that down, then it fits nicely. Open the box up, put a dab of glue here and here, less than I put on. Drop that piece in place, line everything up nicely, and hold it down with a couple spring clamps. Once this dries, it's just going to be a final sanding and we're finished. So I added an extra peg here and this is a fake one that's just glued on and that one. I've taken it over to the belt sander and the palm sander. I cleaned it all up. I rounded the corners a little bit. But that is essentially done. And of course, you have lots of opportunity to do more if you like. This one here, we put some little slidey things on that you have to flip down before you can open it and a little slot at the end. There's no end to the sort of extra pieces that you can add to it to uh, make it a little bit more complex and more difficult for people to open. I uh, hope you had fun with this project. Uh, check out my other videos and like and subscribe if you want more. Thank you.